Both Christ and Buddha saw the passage as one of suffering and basically found identical ways out. What they discovered and revealed to us was that each of us has within himself or herself a still point, comparable perhaps to the eye of a cyclone, a, a spot or center of calm, imperturbability, and non-movement. Buddha articulated this central eye in negative terms as emptiness or void, a refuge from the swirling cyclone of endless suffering. Christ articulated the eye in more positive terms as the kingdom of God or the spirit within, a place of refuge and salvation from a suffering self. For both of them, the easy out was first to find that still point and then, by attaching ourselves to it, by becoming one with it, to find a stabilizing, balanced anchor in our lives. After that, the cyclone is gradually drawn into the eye and the suffering self comes to an end. And when there is no longer a cyclone, there is also no longer an eye. This is a quote that I recently found from a Christian mystic her name is Bernadette Roberts. And today I wanted to take some time to do a guided meditation on what this quote is referring to as the eye of the cyclone, as the doorway to truth that Christ and Buddha are referring to. Today's guided meditation, for the sake of sitting in it, you really do have to put your beliefs aside. I know in, in this video already we have mentioned both Christ and Buddha. So no matter what back background you're from, be willing to just be fresh. Don't bring any beliefs, religious or spiritual, into this guided meditation. Just be totally open to hearing what is being said and allow it to guide you to this eye of the swirling cyclone of suffering. I believe today's meditation will really make that clear for you. Here it goes. Now what I'm about to say is you don't need to accept it. You don't need to create a belief about it. Today, for the sake of today's guidance, we are just being open to the possibility that this may be the case and practicing accordin accordingly. So be open to the poss possibility that this presence that is within you is not personal. This is not the person's presence. The person that you take yourself to be doesn't have a presence. The person and its world and its activities appear in this presence, this presence is the presence of truth. This presence is the presence of God. This presence is the presence of reality, of source. That which you feel or sense in your experience as presence or aliveness that awakeness is the presence of source, the source that you seek. That principle which is 
prior to birth or death. Prior to existence. When we talk about discovering the truth within ourselves, this is what we are doing. We are turning away from the objects which appear in presence, and we are turning inward to notice the presence in which they appear. Whether you conceptually understand this does not matter. For the sake of today's guidance, just be open to the possibility without no further doubt or questioning that the presence that enlivens your experience is the presence of the truth that you seek. And considering that, bring your attention to this presence with no hope of reward just for the sake of convening with the reality that you seek. For the sake of being with the reality that you seek. When thoughts bring you away from your presence, when you notice that, just let go of caring whatever you are thinking about. It is not important. You just don't need it right now. And bring your attention back to your own presence. You have to begin to notice through all of the ups and downs in your life how unbiased this presence is. Mm -hmm. 
no matter what you go through, no matter what the state of circumstance, no matter what the state of body, no matter what the state of mind, the presence is simply there, illuminating the experience. Regardless of if the mind likes what you're going through, regardless of if the mind doesn't like what you're going through, regardless of fear, anger, pain, pleasure, happiness, joyfulness, excitement, anguish, the presence just stays as it is, illuminating whatever is appearing. No matter if you consider yourself to be a good person or a bad person, doing good things or bad things, the presence is simply shining on everything that you do, think, feel, say, experience. This presence of truth or God or reality simply watches without any investment, without any preference. Hearing this is nice, but this needs to be confirmed through our daily life, through all the ups and downs that we go through. Only then do we really mature in this understanding. Only then do we really become more established in and as the presence rather than the circumstances or the state of the body or the thoughts. We have to start to notice how this presence is always there, accompanying every experience that I'm having. Whether if that experience is me meditating on the couch, or me out shopping in a mall, or doing work at the office, or in a fight with a partner or family member. No matter what is happening, presence is always present. <laughs> It is not the circumstance that is present. It is not the body that is present. It is not the thoughts that are present. They are just images appearing like on a movie screen. They appear in, on this presence, which is like the screen.
you have to start taking your attention away from the changing images and start to bring your attention to the screen, to the very presence. Once this teaching has found you, how can you ever be misled again? How can you ever worry about spiritual progress? If this teaching has appeared in the experience and pointing to the presence of truth, in such a simple and clear way. Now we know the work we have to do. How can we ever be misled again? We just have to do the work. I have to stop being so concerned with and entangled in the images appearing, which are the circumstances, the state of the body and the mind. And I have to be more concerned with, in other words, I have to bring my attention to, my interest to, the presence, which is always the same in every experience. Even the thought that is worried about spiritual progress. To be interested in such a thought is the problem. For even this must be turned away from. Simply turn your gaze from this idea towards the actual presence which is what you feel as life in this moment. Now, lastly, just to take it a bit subtler and don't let your mind grasp at this. <laughs> Once it starts to create ideas and starts talking about this, you must let go. Do not pursue. Notice that as you focus on this presence, You are not really there as something which is looking at the presence as something else, as something other than you. When you focus on the presence, it's like being present, being the presence.
focusing on the presence is the same as noticing I am the presence. Play around with this a little bit. Focusing on the presence is the same as being that which is present. <laughs> so you begin this practice thinking that I, Sunny, or Ellen, or Hannah, or John, am focusing on my presence. But as you continue to do this practice and focus on this presence, your idea of yourself starts to dissolve because you see that it is not I, Sunny, or Hannah, or John, or Gunda that is present. I am that which is present, that which is beyond name, shape, form, size, description. We start this journey as a person seeking some truth as something other than him or herself. And through the practice, we start to discover how I was never the person. We start to discover our unconditional, non-conceptual, impersonal being, which we here and now, regardless of if you've done a lot of meditation or no meditation, feel as presence or life. That is the beauty of this. With such pristine clarity, you will start to see that when you say the word I, it has nothing to do with the body. It has nothing to do with thoughts. It has nothing to do with the self-image that the thoughts paint. This presence, which is closer than close, more intimate than even your thoughts, which you say are so close. This presence is the doorway to the truth of yourself, the truth of all of this.
the only obstacle to this discovery is scatteredness, lack of devotion to truth. Being distracted in personal concern, desires, and fears, which once again bring you into the idea of yourself. They reinforce the self image and the belief system, the conceptual world that we live in. Notice how it is only this distractedness and this extreme interest and entanglement in the concerns of the mind, which brings you away from this peaceful presence. That is the work we're doing here. We are dissolving these chains of concern, worry, fear. Right now we are devoted to concern, worry, fear, interpretation, judgment, description, past, future. These are all concepts. All spiritual practices is a reversing of this devotion and interest from all of these changeful concepts, images, appearances, to word the presence in which they appear momentarily. So do this work with great love, with great enjoyment, great devotion. Know it to be the highest and most important thing that you could do in, in the day. And through all of life's ups and downs, struggles, the pleasant and the unpleasant, no matter where your life turns, Confirm these things that we just discussed in your own experience. Keep returning to yourself no matter what happens. Whatever happens will happen and let it happen. But regardless of what happens, keep returning to yourself. This is the great gift that you can give to yourself and everybody else. This will be the end of your suffering and everybody else's. As we continue to turn inward to this presence, this presence will become more and more awake. Right now, it is always there right? Regardless of if you've never even heard of the spiritual teaching before, it's still always there, but it is entirely dormant. It will begin to wake up. And the identification with the personal notions, with the body-mind and its activities will begin to diminish. The best thing you can do for yourself is hold no idea of that. Don't create ideas or be dwelling in mental chatter that is projecting a future about how will that look like. For in you doing so, you are just once again turning away from the presence and into mental chatter, into concepts, which will once again bind you in a conceptual prison. You see how this path of silence works? So even such ideas, you continue to simply turn your gaze from, for they are of no value to you anymore. 
nothing conceptual can be a value value to any you anymore in this spiritual practice. Just inward. Again and again. As many times during the day. As many times as you remember. It doesn't matter if it's hard. Do it anyway. Enjoy the difficulty. Don't shy away from it. Embrace it. The secret is this. Once you start to care about this as the main thing in your life, once this becomes more important than everything else, this will become simpler. And nothing in personal life will fall apart. If anything, it will be more smooth. So have no worries or fears regarding that. And if you do, then work through them. But this teaching is inviting you to go fully in and be fully devoted. If you feel a sense of truthfulness in the message, you must go all in. I hope that you found that meditation very helpful. I hope it brought a lot of clarity to what was being described in this quote by both Buddha and Jesus when they were referring to the eye of the cyclone. So now your job is to practice. If this resonated with you, go all in on this teaching. If you need help with that, check out my free resources down below. I have a free community group right now where you'll get access to multiple free courses. One of the courses is established in this very practice, which you can also call self-inquiry meditation. If you're interested in that, take a look in the description box and join the group. Uh, but if you are looking for more structured practice and guidance and support by me, then you can also learn more about my School of Awakening program, which is a day-by-day -day meditation program, it, a journey that guides you from an intellectual understanding of these teachings to direct experience, okay? So that is also down below in the description. If that resonates with you, please go take a look. Again, I hope that this video is very beneficial. Please give this video a thumbs up if, it, if you did enjoy and gain value from it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Have a good day.